Okay, so we're going to talk a lot about forces between charges and do calculations with them um, in grade 11. Not the same calculations as last year, but um, trying to find the exact magnitude of the forces between charges. And so we can do all of this with force diagrams and we can measure it in newtons and anything that can be measured in newtons can be compared to anything else that can be measured in newtons. So you can find in this subject we will um, get charged objects and then you can compare the charge to the weight of the object. So let's have a look at where everything is coming from here. So all charge spheres are considered to be point charges, okay? So they'll show you these big balls to show you a charge, but in actual fact, they're considered to be a point charge, a tiny little, the charge is all concentrated in a tiny little point. So the charge is concentrated at the midpoint of a very small sphere and the size of the sphere can be ignored. This is important because we're going to be using the distance between spheres, okay? So when we calculate this force, we must remember we're going to have to give all of our answers with forces here with a magnitude and a direction and our magnitude and direction the direction will be based on attraction and repulsion unlike charges attract opposite yeah unlike charges attract like charges repel okay so this law is almost exactly like um, the law of universal gravitation it looks a lot like it but you're not allowed to confuse them so what happens is the strength of the force between charges depends on the magnitude of the charges. Remember, magnitude is just how big it is. How big is the charge on the particles? And also the distance between the midpoints of the charged particles. But we consider them to be a point source. So when we measure this distance, sometimes we draw it a little bit weird because we consider this to be an infinitely tiny little point. It's only a point, okay? So the size, the strength of the force depends on the size of the charge and how far apart the charges are. Now you'll end up with objects, Q1 and Q2, and they will have different charges on them. But the fact of the um, matter is that the force between them is going to be equal and opposite. So the charge can be different, but the force is equal and opposite due to Newton's third law. Okay. Because when one body exerts a force on a second body, the second body exerts a force of equal magnitude in the opposite direction on the first body. So these forces are equal and opposite to each other. So the force of Q1 on Q2 is the same as Q2 on Q1 in the other direction. There are always force pairs, equal and opposite force pairs. So let's have a look at how you work out how big the charge is. The force is directly proportional to the product of the two charges, okay? If you've got Q1 and Q2, charge 1 and charge 2. If you keep two charges, if two charges are kept the same distance apart and the charge increases, the force also increases by the same factor that the charge changed by. So this force is proportional to Q1 times Q2. This is where it's similar to um, the law of universal gravitation, where it's mass times mass. Here it's charge times charge. You're not allowed to mix up these two laws and write your definitions wrong, even though it's very tempting. Okay, so the force is directly proportional to the two charges. Also, remember at this stage that we don't have um, proper coulombs all the time. There's often the millicoulomb, microcoulomb, and the nano and the picocoulomb. So remember your King Henry, remember what your units are so that you can do the calculations properly because we're about to get a formula and into the formula you may only put in coulombs. So you have to convert all of these because you may not use the formula unless your charge is in coulombs. So let's have a look at the consequences of this um, proportional relationship. If you've got two objects, one and two here, with charges Q1 and Q2 at a distance R apart, here's the distance R apart, they are exerting a force on each other. As you can see, I've got Q plus and Q minus, so these two are attracted to each other, okay? So then what happens if we double the charge on one of the objects? So this was Q, it became 2Q. What is my new force? and we just multiply by the two. So this sort of thing will come up in multiple choice questions. What will happen to the force if the charge changes? This charge has increased, so the force has increased, so it's two Q1, Q2. 
So if any one of the charges Q1 or Q2 doubles, the force will double. So if the force was F before, it's now 2F. So <coughs> here now we can change both the charges. Here we started with the same two charges. These two are still opposite charges, so they're still attracting. But here we increase the charge on this object from Q to 3Q. Okay, and this went from Q minus to 4Q minus. So what has happened to the force now? So it's literally 3Q times 4Q. 3 times 4 is 12. So the final force is 12 times the original force. So this is a directly proportional relationship. As the charge increases, the force increases. And we will come back and look at the distance between charges. Otherwise, the video is going to get too long.